And welcome again to the Basil Brush Show. Hello, 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 hello. And to the show. Welcome. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Yes. How do you stop a cold in the head from going down to your chest? I don't know. How do you stop a cold in the head from going down to your chest? Tie a knot in your neck. Boom, boom. <laughs> I see. What's what that? a lovely lot we've got here this week, oh, haven't yes, we, Mr. Marvellous crowd. Yes, That's very nice. kind too, you know. Yes. Look what somebody sent me. Well, that's a marvellous photograph of you. It's not a photograph. It's a drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, sent in by a young chap from Windsor. Stephen yeah. Hutchison did it. Yeah. He painted it with a paint ruler. Yeah. <laughs> marvellous, isn't it, eh? Well, Basil, there's cool. a lot of talent there. Yes, certainly is. Thank you very much, Steve. Cool. <laughs> Basil, yeah. have you, uh... Ever had your portrait done in oil? Oh, yes, long time ago. My mother dropped me photo in a chip pan. <laughs> Art runs in my family, you know. Really? Yeah. Hey, uh, are you a painter? Hey, oh, no, I do drawing. My Uncle Fred's a painter. Oh, really? Uh, what's he working on at the moment? The front room. <laughs> he hasn't been done for years, you know. As I'm talking about art. Huh? What does he draw? The dole, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> I was very good at drawing at school, you know, but so was my brother. You don't often get a good pair of drawers in one family. Oh, steady on. You, you mustn't say a pair of drawers on the telly. Unmentionables must not be mentioned. About it. About it. When I said a pair of drawers, Ooh. I didn't mean a pair of drawers. Ooh. I meant, I meant a pair of drawers. Oh, that's all right then. <clears throat> At one time, everything my brother drew was done in black. Really? Black trees, black grass, black sky, black clouds, even the sun was black. Mm. They took him to a psychiatrist, you knew. Well, to find out why he drew everything in black? Yes. Uh, was it a kind of a complex? Oh, no. He'd lost all his crayons except the black one. <laughs> I say, would you like to have a go at my magic, magic paintbrush? <laughs> my magic, <laughs> magic, magic paintbrush. That's good, I liked it. Yes. Your magic? Yes. Magic paintbrush? Yes. Yes, really? you, yes, good. Uh, Pick it up. That's it. Is it? That's it. Now bring the jar in. Yeah. That's it. Now, you don't need any paint. You just dip the brush in the water and slap it on the canvas. What? Uh, yeah. And you can paint anything you're thinking of. Really? Go on, slap it on. Okay. Here Go we on. Go. That's it. Come that's on. good. That's good. What are you uh, thinking about? Well, actually, Basil, I was, uh, I was thinking about our first guest. Ah! Yes. Well, that's him. Where? John Clocks. Oh. <laughs>
Basil. Come and look at all these mountains. They're beautiful. This is the way to see Ireland, isn't it, eh? Oh, sea island? <laughs> I've been walking through long grass for the last four miles. Oh. I haven't seen a blooming thing. Oh. It was your idea to go on a walking tour of Ireland, and I huh? must say, I'm enjoying it very much. Yeah, but I'll be glad when we reach Killarney, so we can get a good night's kip. Oh. Well, I don't think we ought to go any further tonight. Huh? I mean, look, it says ten miles to Killarney. Well, that's only five miles each. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've only been in Ireland three days and already you've got the Irish logic. Well, it's not surprising. My ancestors on my mother's side were Irish. Well, that's news to me. Yeah. I didn't know your antecedents came from Ireland. I haven't got an antecedent. <laughs> my Auntie Bridget, she married my great uncle Pat. He was Irish. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. Pat O'Reilly. Mm. <laughs> that's why the Irish blue comes naturally to me. Be gone up, it, Jabers. Indeed, to goodness. Hoots, man. Look here. And all 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 and all. And all. That's, uh, that's quite a, quite a brogue you've got there. Yes, I got it off Pat. <laughs> I got it off Pat! <laughs> Basil, it's quite a coincidence, really. Oh, yes, what is that? Well, your mother's family being Irish. Because my ancestors on my mother's side came from Ireland, too. Well, kiss my planish, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my, uh, my great-great-grandfather was one of the hooligans. Which football team did he support? <laughs> His name was Hooligan. Ah. You know, he helped to build some of England's finest roads. Oh, Irishmen are marvellous workmen, aren't they? If your mother comes from Ireland, you'll be happy with the speed. <laughs> hey, did your uh, great uncle Pat uh, work on the roads? Yes. I went to see him working once when I was a little lad. Mm. I was no higher than that, no, about that high. Mm. My uncle Pat was holding a fence post, and his workmate had a 14 pound sledgehammer. <laughs> And my uncle Pat said, I'll hold the post, and when I nod my head, you hit it. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> oh, he was limping for a fortnight. Well, how does a bash on the bonds with a 14-pound sledgehammer give him a limp? He had a nail in his shoe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Basil. Yes. Here we are. There's your sleeping bag. Oh, thanks. Get into that. Oh, cool, it's heavy, isn't it? Right. We'll uh, get some kip. And then we'll press on again in the morning. Uh, you know, we should have taken that farmer's advice and stayed in his cottage for the night, but I didn't fancy it, did you? Eh? Not with all those animals and chickens in the house as well. Yeah. Why not? And what about the smell to start with? Oh, uh, the animals are probably used to that by now. God. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this pillow's a bit hard. God. Well, what are you using for a pillow? An old piece of drain pipe. <laughs> A piece of drain pipe? Yeah. Well, of course it's going to be hard, you nut. Well, I don't see why. I've stuffed it with straw. Oh. <laughs> now, look. Huh? You've got enough stuff here for a pillow. Now, zhuzh it up a bit. Oh, right. Oh. Now, look, I'm, I'm going to zip you up in your... I'm going to zip you up in your sleeping bag. Tuck me in at the back, will you? Tuck me in at the back. God, that's it. Go. Here we go. Oh. Hey! <laughs> Watch it! You caught my brush in that. <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry about that. Right. Here we go. Get some rest. Oh. 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 There aren't any banshees about. <laughs> any what is? Banshees. What's a banshee? It's a kind of Irish ghost. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Panta McGinty's got one of them. <laughs> Made an half pong, you know. <laughs> what pong? Goats. I didn't say goat, I said ghost. Oh, a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> a ghost! There's nothing to worry about, it's just a legend. Huh? A banshee is a kind of spirit that's supposed to wail if anything goes wrong, but uh, it's only folklore, it's not true, really. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Now let's get some sleep. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> Mr. Derry. Uh, Good night. Good night. No such things as ghosts. A load of old cods, <laughs> Good night. Hey! Mr. Derry, wake up! It's the Wailing Banshee! Hey, what? Look! Oh, isn't that cool? Oh, I see, sir! You, sir! Stop biting that octopus! <laughs>
<laughs> Be jabbered. It's one of the little people. Little people? I'm not Jimmy Clitheroe. Cool. Uh, my name's Foles, Derek Foles, and this is my best friend, Basil Hodge. Uh -huh. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Terence O'Shaughnessy Milligan, sir. Ah. It's myself I am, to be sure, sir. <laughs> Do you mind if I sit down there with oh, you? Oh, no, sure. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh my poor feet. A terrible, terrible sore, sir. So sore? Aye, sir. It is a long road from Killarney, sir. Well, I couldn't agree more, sir. I mean, sir. <laughs> it has to be, hasn't it? Basil, what are you talking about? Well, that road from Killarney. I mean, it has to be long. If it was any shorter, it wouldn't reach here, would it? <laughs> You're right, sir. Huh? Absolutely right. Yeah. You're a man of intelligence. Uh, That's what you are. I, I'm very sorry. We haven't got an extra blanket for you, Mr. Milligan. And it's uh, getting a bit cold, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bit, Uncle Willie. Oh, oh that's all right. A drop of the hard stuff. Uh, that'll keep the chill out of me bones. Uh, would you like a drop of the critter? Uh, well, uh, what is it? It's poteen. Real Irish poteen. Oh, no, thanks. I've heard about that stuff. Hmm. It's wonderful good for keeping the cold out, you know. Oh. I made it myself. Did you really? Oh, my auntie Flossie used to make homemade wine. Mm. Her dandelion and burdock was delicious. Uh, really? Yeah. Would you like a wee drop? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't mind a little taste. Uh, just to remind me of my auntie Flossie. <laughs> right, here, right. here we go. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the world of good that way. Right. Threw me the world of good. He nearly blew me head off. God. Well, you should have been with me last night. Yeah. You had a bit of a hoolie. Well, what's a hoolie? A hoolie? Well, it's a sort of a, a sing-song, you know, a dance oh, with yeah. a Cayley band and a, a drop of the hard stuff. You yeah. see, wear a toot on the flute and a twiddle in the fiddle, hopping in the middle like a heron on the griddle, up, down, hands around, crossing to the wall. Oh, hadn't we the gaiety at the filthy fluter's ball? <laughs> Oh. What's that? He is not a filthy fluter. Huh? It's Phil the Fluter. Ah, uh, it's a silly name anyway. Listen, did you ever hear tell of the greatest playwright that ever lived? Huh? Brendan Behan. Oh, yes, he's very good. Oh, yeah. And what about that marvellous Irish actor, Peter O'Toole? Not forgetting the little people. Uh, you don't mean the little people really exist? Well, of course I do. There's fairies, elves, gnomes and pixies. And I've seen them all. Well, if he keeps drinking that stuff, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's right. The bogs is full of fairies, and these woods is full of leprechauns. Uh, what, what are leprechauns? Leprechauns? Well, they're fairy shoemakers, that's what they are. Aye. In these woods, there are hundreds of little pixie cobblers mending the fairy shoes with their little golden hammers. Ah, <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't? And do you believe it, though? Well, to tell you the truth, it sounds like an awful lot of old shoemakers to me. God, what a load of old cods, Wallop. <laughs> hey, what? Razzle. Huh? Look at that! Oh. We it's themselves! What? Little people, look, whatever you do, don't take your eyes off them. Why can't we take our eyes off them? Well, if you do, they'll go away. Not unless they have to give us a gift of gold. Oh. Oi, Vice Mayor. Are you three again? Oh, I should have known. Four times this week already, I got you out of trouble. Say. From this, I should make a living. Excuse me, sir. Are you a shoemaker? You should ask, am I a shoemaker? Of course I'm a shoemaker. Here, my card. A.B. Schumacher, Esquire. Solicitor, attorney, and legal advisor to the Leprechaun Protection Society. Do me a favor. Shut your eyes for a minute, eh? No, no, don't do that. Keep your eyes on them. Otherwise, they'll get away. We won't get our gift of gold. I'm very sorry, Mr. Shoemaker. No disrespect. But you know, it's a fairy law, and I know me rights. All right, all right, already. But you boys are costing the organization a fortune. Say, say, hey, there's your guilt. And oh. I wish you good health to enjoy it. And Michael Murphy, Patty Murphy, Sean Murphy, please, do me a kindness, stay out of sight, and please, stay out of trouble. Muzzle talk. Oh, thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. And the best of muzzle to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at that? Oh, oil of real fairy gold. Yeah, yeah, thanks to the little Murphy brothers, eh, Basil? Yes, yeah, and well, as my Uncle Patrick would have to say, always be thankful for small Murphys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> From the mountains of Baltimore to the shores of Gold we be. 
If you happen to see the little people in the runaway, you'll be getting yourself a crock of gold as sure as you were born. Remember to keep your eyes upon that Irish letter of so far away that nobody's ever been there, not even us. And in this land, everything is upside down, inside out. In other words, the other way round. In the land of other way round, you keep your feet in the air and your head on the ground. Bananas are just as straight as you please, and the flowers get the honey from the bumblebees. In other way, round and round and round and round It's the other way round Now there is a land so far away That it makes Australia just around the corner Night time there is as bright as day And the way they live is even far enough In the land of, in the land of, in the land of other way Keep your feet in the air and your head on the ground. You wait till dawn to put on the light. And if you turn left, then you're bound to be right. Two, three. In other way, round and round and round and round. It's the other way round. Now the elephants there are two feet high. Not big enough to take a baby for a ride. Can you imagine the size of a fly? If one comes along, then you'd better step aside. In the land of, in the land of, in the land of, other way round. You keep your feet in the air and your head on the ground. And every day, what a sight to see. The shore rushing up to meet the sea. In other way, round and round and round and round. It's the other way round. So if you feel like a change of scene, go the other way round. It's time that you start it. The only trouble is you have been there and back again before you depart. Your feet in the air and your head on the ground. The only trouble you have, I fear, you simply can't get there from here. Two other way round and round and round and round. It's the other way round. Round and round and round and round. And round. Everything's the other way around. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a beautiful child. Oh, those beautiful ears, those teeth, those eyes, those nose. <laughs> Hey, hey, good looking. Where'd you get those beautiful eyes? It came with my head. Use <laughs> a little chichi face. Oh, uh, uh, you're lovely. Give us a kiss. Come on, 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 come Huh? You've got it bad, haven't you? Talking, to a, talking to a photograph? Huh? Who is it? Your, your new girlfriend? Oh, well, well, not exactly. Mr. Come Dick. on, come on, let me have a look. Huh? It's a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> You've been talking to yourself. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I was you, only passing you the know, time. You, you get vainer every day, you do. Well, I was only passing the time waiting for you to come and read the story. Ah. Uh, you read it very well, you know. Do I? Yeah, you do. You definitely do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we are then. The Adventures of Basil the Buccaneer. Are yeah. you ready, little choochy face? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, don't. 
You're making me embarrassed. Oh, I'm sorry. My ember has never been so harassed. <laughs> now, will you? Basil, forget yeah. it, will you? Yeah. Now, you remember in last week's episode, Captain Basil Trelawney had sailed into Georgetown in South America yeah. for a reunion with the governor, Sir Gerald Milcombe, and his household. Yes, yes. Now, he met Sir Gerald on the road to Milcombe House. But. But. But, 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 but. <laughs> but what? Well, the reunion was not what he expected. You don't say. I do say. You said it very well. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, there was one notable absentee. Pardon? Absentee. No, thanks. I just had a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. There's a drop left. Yes. Slut, 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 slut. Mmm. Delicious coffee. Best coffee I've ever tasted. <clears throat> Shall we, uh, shall, shall we? we continue? Right. Sir Gerald's niece, Mary, yeah. the girl with whom Captain Basil was secretly in love, yeah. was missing. Perhaps she's gone to the pictures with another boyfriend. <laughs> she didn't have another boyfriend. You know, she, she wasn't a gad about. Wasn't she? No. In those days, the young ladies were faithful and true. They were chaste. Chaste? Chaste. I bet some of them were caught, too. <laughs> H-A- S T E chased. <laughs> All right. All right. There's no need to get your undies in an uproar. <laughs> you do get your knickers in a knot. I do not. <laughs> I do not get my knitters in a knot. I mean knitters in a knot. all confused. Now, belt up and listen. Ooh. The captain learned that his beloved Mary had been kidnapped by his arch-enemy Blackbeard. Yeah. Basil's jaw twisted with anger as he thought of Mary's predicament. What horrible fate awaited her in the clutches of that merciless <laughs> villain? <laughs> Sir Gerald, said Basil. I think my feelings fallen out. <laughs> I got a big hole in me moolah. Look. <laughs> I sat big moolah. I do not. I do not want to look at your big hole in your big moolah. I want to read. The, I want to read this story. So belt up. <laughs> You're not like this when we're playing. This little piggy went to market together. <laughs> Next time, I won't let you be the one who goes wee 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 all the way home. <laughs> Will I? <laughs> right. Right. Sir Gerald, said Basil. Yeah. Blackbeard can have Flint's treasure map, uh. but it would be no guarantee of Mary's safe return. We must find where the scoundrel is holed up. Yeah. At that moment, several of Basil's crew appeared. Yeah. Captain, said Mr. Bird, the first officer. Yeah. Ozzy here has uh -huh. bad news of Blackbeard's whereabouts. Yeah. He beckoned forward one of the crew members, a Welshman with a scarred face and a big nose called Oswald. That's a funny name for a nose. <laughs> the man's name was Oswald. And to the crew members, he was known as Ozzy. Was he? No, Ozzy. <laughs> he was called Ozzy, not his nose. Ah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not important. No, it isn't. As William Shakespeare once said, a nose by any other name would smell so sweet. <laughs> Please listen. Uh -oh. Oswald, Oswald, said Captain Basil. Yeah. Do you know Blackbeard's camp? Aye, Captain, replied the seaman. I've heard things in the tavern, he uh, added, yeah. tapping the side of his giant nose with his finger in a confidential manner. He seems very proud of his hooter, doesn't he? <laughs> you now, there were many famous men of history with, with big noses. Really? Uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Serrano de Bergerac, and the Duke of Wellington had a very prominent proboscis. Really? Yeah. Did he have a big nose as well? But I told you he did. You forgot one famous conk. Who's that? <coughs> oh. She to my piano the other day. I bet you think that's funny. Right? They say, who hates you? 
I hate you, Beck. I do want to say I hate you. Have you done? Have you done? Yes, I've supped up. <laughs> they say, they say in the town, there's a strange ship laying at anchor. That's good Spanish. On the Essequiebo River, huh? said Oswald. Yeah. That could be Blackbeard's ship, mused the captain. How do we get there, Sir Gerald? Well, the Essequiebo lies a few miles northwest of here. Oh, I say, jolly hock stick and all that sort of thing. <laughs> and to maintain the element of surprise, yeah. I suggest we get over land. The party set off through the jungle, yes. and with hair in the lead, pick their way through the dense undergrowth yes. toward the great swamp. Yes. As they entered a clearing, Tiddler, yes. the cabin boy... Oh, I like Tiddler. Yes, go on, go Tiddler, on. Tiddler, the cabin boy, cried out. Yes. Look, Captain, a banana tree. A banana tree. The boy broke into a run. Yes. Too late to hear the cry from Hare. For him, too. Stop. Yes. <laughs> and almost overbalanced as he felt his feet gripped by unseen hands. He's got caught up in a rugby match. <laughs> Desperately... Desperately, Tiddler tried to lift one foot free, yeah. but his other foot sank deeper into the trap. Yeah. Within seconds, the boy was up to his waist in a thick, cloying quagmire. What? Boy thunder, shouted the captain. The lad's in quicksand. What? That's all we've got time for this week, Basil. All we've got time for? But you can't leave little Tiddler in all that sand without his bucket and spade. <laughs> Listen next week to another thrilling episode of Basil the Buccaneer. <laughs> Tiddler's dead in trouble as he sinks into the sand. I want to hear what happens. Keep reading. Stop the band. Basil won't let Tiddler down. He's always there at hand. The villains used to tremble when they heard his name. Come on. Will the lad be rescued by old Basil's privateer? He'll get quicksand in his cake hole, up his nose and in his ear. Can our hero save him? If he does, we'll give three cheers. And everywhere he went, they heard his battle cry. He was a brave, brave man. Come on, Basil. A pirate bold was he, and a mighty yaw he knew no fear, he sailed the mighty sea. Again and again on the rolling main his enemies would fly, but they heard his skull and crossbones and her.